But I was just looking in detail at the uh, at the training program, and I've now decided I need to be very cautious tomorrow. Mm. Can't go racing because it starts off like it starts off like a whirlwind. Yeah, I mean, yes and no. Like it starts off like a small whirlwind, so it's a manageable whirlwind, but not if you've raced like a hundred percent and now you're flat. Um, yeah, I guess it's one hundred and six kilometers. First week, but on Saturday there's a marathon pace run. Oh 13, God, 13, I didn't look that far. I didn't want to know. Thirteen <laughs> k marathon pace. Oh boy. Okay. Thirteen k marathon pace straight in. Okay. Well, you know my mantra from yesterday: only one at a time. So I'm not going to think about that run. I'm oh, only. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm only gonna think about my Monday run. <laughs> Monday is very doable. I think it's like. 13k with general aerobic yeah with yeah. strides or something hi and welcome to running book reviews where we usually review running books but today uh we couldn't because not that we haven't had time to read running books because i think we're we no. read like two or three at this point but we're waiting for some authors to you know decide whether or not they would like to come and have a yeah. little chat with us so um instead of our regular book related episode we thought we would give you something because something's always better than nothing and so we're going to give you a bonus episode instead great i'm really <laughs> looking forward to it what's it about <laughs> so so today we're going to talk about our 2024 marathon training because that's going to start so we're recording on a Friday and it's going to start on Monday, the yeah, 15th so we get of July. We run on the weekend without it counting as part of our training, but mm -hmm. don't get too tired because mm -mm. training starts and training is going to be seven days a week. It is. It is. Yeah. So before we get into what we're going to do, um, maybe we can just kind of like look back at what we've used in the past, what we think worked. Um, and uh, I don't know, Alan, if you want to talk about the runs that are not going to count this weekend, like we could talk about that as well, because you're going to do a run that's not going to count. No, yeah, I've got a 20 kilometer trail race coming up with a lot of the guys from the club. I just thought it would be fun to, uh, to enter. Um, but now I look at next week's training program as the marathon training kicks off and I've suddenly realized I need to be careful, probably not not race that, probably just take that as a training run. You could just run with one of the one of the other people doing it. Uh, there there are some triathletes that are not really supposed to be like racing it all out either. Yeah, so, we'll see what happens. Yeah, They're probably trail runs are difficult because you get single filed quite quickly. So, but then that might be a bonus because maybe you'll get single filed and then you won't be able to go fast. And so that'll mm. like kind of put the brakes on you naturally without you having mm. to do anything. My husband, Andre, he's like very, very excited about tomorrow. He was he was actually a little too happy about how early he had to go get his nephew tomorrow because his nephew, uh, shout out to Simo if he ever listens to this podcast, although I don't think he does, but um, he might listen to it like down the road. He, uh, yeah, he, he apparently doesn't like, like to wake up too early. So this is, I don't think there's anybody in the world who wakes up as early as Andre does. Well, that is true. Mm. I mean, earlier than that, you're just waking up, like you're just not going to bed. Yeah. basically. <laughs> uh, that's a, a slight exaggeration, but Andre for work gets up during the week at 4.30. I'm going to say 4.30. I mean, it might be 4.40 or something, but I know he leaves the house at 5. So, and he doesn't like to get up at 4. So I, I think it's 4.30. It's bonkers. Yeah, it's very early. Also, he's running. He's He's, he's got to be quite efficient to get up as late as 4.30. Yeah, he's got it down to a science. Like he has, he prepares his breakfast so this is for all the people in your life um, that maybe say like, oh, I can't run because I don't have time. So this is how he does it so efficiently. It's because on Sunday, he prepares all of his overnight oats for the entire work week. And uh, basically, he doesn't eat at home 
what he does is like in the morning, he'll, you know, just like do the basics, like brush his teeth and get dressed and, you know, pack his lunch, like pack his lunch. Put his means- pants on. Uh, yeah, you got, yeah, you huh? need to wear pants. Actually, funny story. Do you want to hear my funny story, Alan? <laughs> yes. <laughs> We haven't okay. got into the podcast I, yet, but we're still talking about you and your family. But it's I'm great. So sorry. Tell, us, tell us the funny story. Okay, so I have this recurring dream, and this is since I was like in high school. I have this recurring dream where I show up to work with no pants. <laughs> so, and I have no idea where it came from because it's actually never happened. But like, I I get this dream periodically, and I have no idea why. You should have said that as an intro story <laughs> for the psychology of running. You know that we did the oh, yeah. psychology of running book. She said, yes. "Oh, I need a psychoanalyst who can explain to me my dream where oh, I darn it. without and, my pants on." And, and I had the two perfect people because they're like psychology researchers. They could yeah. have told me exactly why I keep having that dream. I'm like 43 now, and I still so I have it much less often because I used to have it regularly, but like. Every so often I'll have the dream and I'm just, it's just the workplace changes, right? Because it used to be, I would show up at my workplace. I used to work at the Maxi grocery store and I'd show up at Maxi and I'd be like, like in my underwear, like I would have my, my work shirt on, like my uniform shirt, but no, no pants. And so I'd be asking everyone if they had some spare pants in their locker. <laughs> <laughs> and it would be like almost time to punch okay. in and I'd be really like stressed about it. Okay, so and, right, um, <laughs> so right in if you know what this means. Explain you know what this explain means. Explain this to, to Elizabeth what yes. to Liz, what her uh please leave me a comment on is. social media. <laughs> you realize um, the sort of people we're going to attract now, you know, there won't be runners. Oh yeah, that's going to be terrible. Uh, well, but then they'll they're going to get to the meat of the podcast, and they'll be like, "Oh no, this is boring. Let's turn this off." So, um, uh, so marathon training, you can do this with training, or without yeah. your pants on, <laughs> um, depending on I don't it's know, preferable. Where your it's preferable psychological your, profile is. Yeah, it's preferable with your pants on. But uh, you know, I have to admit that what the girls wear are like practically not pants. I would say they're bathing suit bottoms. Yeah, they wear like like buns. They call yeah. them. Don't they? Yeah, I don't know. Guess because they just cover their buns. Mm, I don't know. I've never worn those, and I never wanted to. I remember at one point, um, the Concordia cross country team wanted to get them, and I was completely against. And then we didn't get them in the end, so that was good. You wonder what the point is. It just seems terribly. Sexist. I know it's like, why don't you just wear like a bikini bottom? I mean, yeah. it's the same thing, right? Um, but it's like the wrong sport. I don't know. Like I, I never liked those things, but I guess, you know, it is the way it is. Um, and maybe we'll talk to Lauren Fleshman about that once, uh, once she comes on the podcast. Yes. Come on, Lauren. We're having to make this, (laughs) we're having to make this extra episode partially because you haven't responded to us yet. (laughs) Um, so yeah, I was talking about Andre's efficiency. So he, he basically, he makes all his breakfasts on Sunday and then in the morning, he just like gets dressed, brushes his teeth, grabs his breakfast from the fridge or one of them, and then like puts his lunch in his lunchbox and that's it. Then he leaves for work. So he's very efficient. Um, so yeah, if ever you think you don't have time for stuff, well, you can make time for stuff. Just need to get organized. Yeah. I don't have time to get organized. <laughs> okay, that's going to be a different kind of problem. Um, maybe we could talk about it on a run, Alan, because we're going to have a lot of runs to do. So it looks like we're good. Yeah. We haven't been you spending can... that much time together recently. And I think that's because we know this training block's coming up. We're going to yeah. get sick of each other. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so um, maybe we should get into it. We should, yeah. Like hundreds so, and hundreds of people tuned in to hear about marathon training. I and know. They've all and... tuned out because they don't want to hear about how your husband <laughs> makes his breakfast and whether you wear your pants when you go to work or not. <laughs> what the hell is this? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Okay, so let's let's get into the actual podcast material, which is marathon training, which will start on Monday. Yeah. Uh, so I guess first topic is what did we do in the past and what did we think worked and maybe what did yeah. we think didn't work? So yeah. I guess this is, first of all, as a summary for people who um, haven't been following us all the time. Um, yeah, because the, the people that have should, been following us for like three or four years, 
they know exactly what we're talking yeah. about. And maybe now they're going to fast forward this part of the conversation as well. <laughs> okay, I'll try and be quick. Um, but basically, we're going to go, we're going to run Wine Glass Marathon, which is on October 6th. Um, why are we running Wine Glass? We decided we'd run that because it's very slightly downhill and flat and hence fast. It occurs in October when it's likely to be cool. So we're going to do warm weather training, get cooler and cooler and cooler. And this is going to give us our maximum chance of doing our fastest marathon. And we're going to train to try and do yeah. a full effort, fast marathon, hopefully under three hours. Yeah. But we've exactly. been saying this for four years now. Yes. Yeah. So, and so for four years, we've been kind of using the same book for our training. Um, and the reason is just because I guess each time we were learning that, like, maybe we didn't exactly um, use the right plan because so mm -hmm. we used advanced marathoning third edition. Um, and yeah, so by there, Pete Fitzinger and Scott Douglas. Yes. And uh, we there there are several marathon training plans. There's a there are several levels of marathon training. So we've been using the advanced levels, but there's also an option of having a 12 week plan or an 18 week plan. And and so you know we we started with the 18 week plan, but I think mm -hmm. was that when we did Georgina because I think we did Georgina and. We were maybe slightly we were overcooked. Yeah. yeah, we felt we both felt we were fatigued going in. Yeah. But in retrospect, when we play that back now, we were fatigued, but we actually performed pretty well. Mm -hmm. We were actually on target and were probably just probably beaten by the wind factor. They had these massive shore sort of it was on a lake shore and it was these massive winds at about what, 50K or something was blowing at? I remember I almost yeah. ran into a seagull, which was kind of... <laughs> which was flying was, in place. <laughs> yeah, it was just sitting stationary on the wind at sort of about head height. I almost ran into it. We were we were both like on target at halfway and we're looking at each other going, oh, this is on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is on. And then we turned and we went into the wind. And then within and about first... 5K or something, we were we were well off the pace. Yeah. And, and the thing is that when we, so it was two out and backs. So the first time going mm. into the wind, like, I don't remember it being that bad. So it was either because we, we were, were fresh or because we were sheltered because there were maybe more runners around us at the beginning than there were on the second time, or maybe the winds picked up like when All we the came above, back around. Yeah. All maybe. The above. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So on the way back, it was fine. Um, but then we had to go out a second time, and I think that's where we lost everything, basically. Very slowly, but yeah, I, I remember just um, turning around and being so excited because we we were, you know, just in that sweet spot. We were like 15 seconds under target, and that was exactly where we wanted to be. And feeling like it was doable, you know, it wasn't like I wasn't fresh, but I felt like, okay, I can do this. And uh, then, yeah, within within 5K, it was... Uh, I uh, think we ran 304, 305. Um, yeah. And at the time we said, oh, we just lack that little bit of speed. Um, we just need to get a better day and lack some speed. So let's do the handsome program which has a lot of race speed and not so much long runs. Yeah, we also, that that was for a spring marathon, I think we ended yeah, up doing. Yeah, probably was. And so I think spring marathons, at least for me, they're not usually very good. So I don't know if it's the plan or if it's the fact that, you know, you're training through the winter and then uh, you get to race day and it's like the first warm day usually. I, I, agree, with, I agree with the spring marathons. I think it's hard. It's harder to do a, as good an effort. Yeah. It's hard to run the pace that you're supposed to when you're wearing three pairs of tights and two jackets and <laughs> Yeah, but then you have to trudging do, through you, the snow. You know, you have to do a sort of scaled. You have to do, okay, I'm gonna train slower, but it's an equivalent effort. Because, right. But then it's it's kind of hard to gauge. 
and you psychologically you feel like you're not running quickly enough, I, I think you've got to be pretty smart to be able to train effectively through the East Coast, North American winters and yeah. then be fast for spring. Yeah. So I, I think like my best strategy, the time that it worked, uh, but it wasn't for a marathon. It was for a 30 K race in March. And the best thing that I ever did was the Hansen plan in the winter, but I did the two hard days inside on the treadmill. So I, I was able to, I worked in a office building that had a gym. And so I was able to go to work early at, and I'd be like, like the, the Monday, Wednesday crowd kind of knew me and like, I'd get these weird stares. Cause I was just there. Like they would come in, they would do their work, strength training or whatever workout and they would leave and I'd still be on the treadmill <laughs> running, running like marathon pace or like intervals or something. That's, uh, they must, that's probably must fantastic have... um, mentality type training, but I don't think I could do that. You know what? I found it easier than running outside in the snow, honestly. I, I, because I mean, I did like, I wouldn't have done all my easy runs in there, but you know, because it was only twice a week because I got to hit the paces, like for me, for my confidence level going into a race, it was fantastic because I was, I was hitting the paces and, mm. you know, I, I know that, you know, there's, there are some articles online about, you know, treadmill running and training on the treadmill and you should put the incline or, or something like that. But yeah. you know what? I didn't do any of that. It was just flat. And I ran a, a 30K race with a hill in it. It was the Around the Bay 30K for anybody that kind of knows that race. There's a hill at like 26 kilometers that's pretty steep and like kind of long. So it'll really crush you at that moment in the race. But, you know, I mean, that's despite the one, that's that. That's the one at Hamilton? In Hamilton, yeah. Yeah, older than Boston. Exactly. That's yeah. the one. Yeah. So, yeah. And despite that, I ended up running the same pace that I was training my average pace on the treadmill for my marathon pace runs. I ran the whole 30K at that pace average. So it wasn't that pace all the time. So I was faster when it was flat and I was slower towards the end when it got to the hilly section but like overall the pace was exactly the same so so having said that you still didn't you haven't produced a good i haven't produced a good marathon, marathon. <laughs> no <laughs> i think we both find our marathons are usually about 10 minutes slower something like that around, yeah in the spring that. yeah yeah to this year my marathon was quite a bit slower but it was because it wasn't really the main event for me so yeah that's that, that wasn't really um yeah you know, I did Boston in the spring, so I, I deliberately sort of tailored it for Boston rather than trying to run, you know, some sort of su superbly trained up high octane race. I thought, you know, I need to measure it and enjoy Boston. Mm -hmm. That led us to coming back to advanced marathoning. And um, we chose to do uh, the 12 week plan instead of the 18. So we figured, well, we'll get all the benefits from the training plan, but then we won't do as long a training plan. So hopefully we mm. won't be overcooked on race day Yeah, and that'll be great. And then it wasn't, so it didn't produce actually, no, was that the one that you ran under three hours? I think you ran under three it hours. Might have that been, was Toronto, yes. right? Yeah, that might, might've been that. Um, so, one of the things we did try to do with, um, Fitzinger's advanced marathon program is we said, we're getting a bit exhausted doing this program. So let's cut our our training paces back a bit. Oh, no, but we weren't we smart enough yet at that point. We did that the next time. Oh, did around. we? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> yeah, you're getting ahead of yourself. Yeah. That year that you ran three hours, I think we were trying to train at did, the pace. We did at the paces and a 12 week program, I think. Yeah. But I think we failed a lot of the runs. So I think like, mm. yeah, although you achieved the goal on the, on marathon day, yeah. like we, like the marathon, remember yeah. there was the, the marathon, was it a 19 K or a 23 K? We had to and stop after 10 K. We, yeah, we really stopped hot and we were smashing ourselves to pieces. But, well, yeah, we were smashed and it was only like halfway through. So it was, uh, yeah. Yeah. Our friend, Gu our friend Guillaume was running with us and he said, oh, I think you should just um, call it quits now. Yeah. That's guys how slow are, we were running. Guys, <laughs> he was, he was you guys are falling off the pace already. 
you're yeah. you're murdering yourself. You should just wind it down. We went, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> Well, you you guys, you and Guillaume were far ahead of me. I was like straggling behind, like yeah, but, really uh, straggling. Even though I, I was even far ahead that... of you, I was still off the pace. Yeah. I was just less off the pace than you. I guess, so, yeah. Yeah, but um, we did that. And and um, I had a period in the middle where I fell down the stairs at home and broke some ribs. And mm -hmm. actually had a period where I couldn't run. Yeah, and, and that was, and was pretty close. Bike, it was like I was doing four bike weeks. training. I was doing bike training like it was about five weeks before the race. Yeah. I was like, oh, I've got to keep fit. What am I going to do? Let's get on a stationary bike and just bike and bike and bike. Okay, I'll try to run. Oh, no, that hurts. Oh, back on the bike, back on the bike. Yeah. Um, so so we had a we had sort of an imperfect. I certainly had an imperfect, and you had some training failures. And I managed to pull off the sub three on the day. I don't really know how that happened. Maybe it was maybe it was the injury just helped you recover before the marathon. Maybe <laughs> maybe I got an enforced you know? rest. Yeah. Yeah. So then the next year after that, we decided that we I think that was when we read Macmillan's book um, about modifying your training plans to more suit you. And that was when we decided, mm -hmm. uh, because in the book, he was saying like, it's better to train at the pace that you're at. So you start the training at the pace that you're at. And maybe yeah. later, if like you get have a tune up race, and it shows that you're fitter, you can increase mm -hmm. your training paces. So because we're going for a time that we've actually never achieved, or at least I've never achieved, then that's not really my marathon pace. And if I'm calculating all my paces based on that, then it means that and like I'm probably- out. Yeah. Yeah. So so then we modified the paces a little bit so that they were reflective of a performance that we've actually done. Well, mm -hmm. me actually more than you because you've actually done the sub three, whereas I haven't. Um, we did a few other things where we modified also the marathon pace workouts that we we failed most of the time. Yeah, we, we broke them, them into yeah. intervals. So instead of doing like a straight sixteen k, we did. I don't remember. Did we do like three times six or something or yeah. no, we did. We did four, th uh, four times four. I think it was when we did the 19, we ended up doing three times six. So it was 18 K or something like that. I remember we did them in sections and we actually did a bunch of them. Didn't we do, we did them on the actual race circuit that we were going to do. Mm -hmm. So we chose the Petit Train de Nord, um, marathon. Fantastic scenic marathon, car free on a sort of bike trail. Um, uh, net net downhill. Mm -hmm. All the good stuff. All the good stuff. What we did though was we ran them slower than target pace, than race target pace, because we said we're not quite there yet. We'll be mm -hmm. there on we'll be there on race day. So instead of running them at four fifteen per kilometer. Four minutes, 15 seconds per kilometer, which is a three hour pace. We were running them at like 420, mm -hmm. something like that. Um, and we said, that's okay. That's what we have now. And it's probably an equivalent effort. Yeah. It certainly felt like the right effort. Yeah. Um, but yeah. It, and then on the day it's... you did 306 and I did 307. It, yeah. it, was, it was warm. Um, towards the second half, certainly warmer than the ideal marathon racing temperature, but it wasn't hugely warm. Yeah. I don't know. What was it like 20 degrees Celsius or something like that? Yeah. I don't think it was excessively warm, but, but I guess warmer than, uh, we would have needed. I remember I was really thirsty when I got over the finish line, but that might've just been cause I ate all my gels and those are so uh, sweet. I remember I was able to hold the pace, but no, like fairly consistently but not a pace that was actual three-hour marathon pace mm -hmm. so i was already off target by halfway we were like a minute over something like mm -hmm. that yeah and i didn't drift that much but i wasn't able to get onto three-hour race either. pace it was just too much of an effort yeah like the three-hour race pace felt significantly more difficult like extremely difficult and just off that pace felt hard but manageable. Mm -hmm. I just felt like 
you know, I was giving it, I was giving it a hundred percent of what I had at the time to achieve, you know, five minutes off target. Yeah. The training though went really well. Like that was probably my best marathon training cycle in the summer in the last few years Yeah. because a, so I didn't have plantar fasciitis. I didn't get Achilles issues. I didn't, I wasn't injured. Like I was completing all the, all the training, Yeah. which was, you know, already kind of a win for me because I, like you talked about your rib injury, but I, I was like constantly managing something. I feel like in some of those other um, sessions, um, and some of the stuff, some of the issues, it's because I I went into training with them. It's not like I developed them during. It's just like plantar fasciitis Yeah. for anybody who's had that. It just lasts forever, um, and so I. But I was managing it where I was just trying to not get to the point where. Uh, where you do damage and you're like regressing. So you just kind of have to work in that. Um, so I had this rule, it would be like, th there can be pain at the beginning, but after the warm up, it should be uh, like muted. And then if it starts to get sharp again, then that's when you're supposed to stop. And so then I was always managing. And sometimes if I would increase the pace, it would start to like, like kind of be hitting up against being sharp. And so I'd be sort of like, oh, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just run not faster than this pace. And so I was doing a lot of that during training, but I mean, I managed to do most of it, I guess. Um, I, I yeah. feel like the last year our training was the best the Yeah. best ever in terms of del we delivered what we set out to do Exactly. Yeah. um Which was fantastic. but then having not achieved the uh the three-hour marathon it leaves it left us questioning okay what we did is we saw we set ourselves a target based on experience we saw, set ourselves a target of training so that we could complete the training but the training we've set ourselves does not enable us to hit the three-hour marathon you know it's the Mm -hmm. it's the old knife edge position Yeah. Yeah. where if you go too fast you're going to blow up in your training and then you'll want then you'll fail if you don't go fast enough you won't be able to deliver on race day and you'll fail as well so we're trying to find that sort of very fine point Maybe the fact that we were able to complete all the training, maybe that's a sign that we were training under what we should have been. Because um, remember when we read Alexi Pappas and her coach, like, so Alexi Pappas, Mm for those that don't know, although I think everybody knows who Alexi Pappas is, but she competed for Greece in the 2016 Olympics. And -hmm. um, she had her coach uh, would tell her, like, it's a rule of thirds. So one, one third of your workouts should feel great. One third should feel okay. And then one third should feel really crap or like not be or be like very difficult or you can fail in one third and it's okay. Not that you want to fail too many times, but you can fail in one third and, and usually it just means you're pushing the edge. Um, And fail in, in like, you're not able to complete the intervals at pace, not fail as in you get injured, because then that means you went over like the wrong edge. <laughs> Yeah. but so, so she said that, and I think that because we were able to complete everything, maybe that was a sign that it, that maybe we should have um, We made could it have a could little have harder. trained harder. Yeah. Could have trained harder. I don't know. It's hard to say, right? Because. Then going into a, a race, knowing that you didn't complete some of the key workouts can also not be an advantage. So, Yeah, you have to you have to believe that on race day you can deliver more because mm you're -hmm. you're rested and you exactly. have so you're tapered and you have the excitement and motivation of race day. It's like you're supposed to believe you're a sub three hour marathoner before you actually become one. because that's part of like beco becoming the better version is you have to believe that you already are the better version. It's just, you haven't expressed it yet. And so then it's just a matter of expressing it, but it's hard because usually you want some kind of sign. I think I had the advantage because I did a three-hour marathon way, way back um, in my history. So when you come to that belief, one of the things you go is, okay, what have I got in my history that tells me I can do this? Mm -hmm. So And you're well, like, well, I, I I've ran done it 20 it before. years ago. <laughs> I ran it 20 plus years ago. So 
I've obviously not got older or slower since then. So I should no. be able to do it now. No, I and you know what? I, dust off. At the, <laughs> and at this rate, Alan, like you're going to have to be my training partner until I achieve this thing. So like there might be another 20 years. It's going to be the <laughs> skeleton, the skeleton parked in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's Alan. He's my training partner. <laughs> Uh, so, so basically all that to say that this year, we're going to go back to what we did before Georgina. We're taking the 12 week plan. We're just going to take it as is, and we're just going to try and do it. Yeah. Um, but we're going to give ourselves a little bit of an edge for the hardest marathon pace workout because yeah. the hardest one in the 12 week plan. So the 18 week plan has one, one that's even harder, but the 12 week plan tops up at a long run with. 19k at marathon pace um and so what we are doing is on that exact weekend where it should be uh we're gonna do a race and we're basically gonna do a half marathon and we're just gonna run marathon pace for the half marathon so it means we're not gonna be carrying our hydration because someone's gonna give us little cups of water along the way <laughs> yes we're gonna have race day uh we're gonna we're gonna yeah. eat race day gel so yeah. It'll be like fueling practice as well as um, a good training, hopefully. Yeah. However, and we'll be doing this of a full week of training. We will. And yeah. in fact, maximum week training, I think. No, almost. I'm, I've got the training in front of me here. Yeah, yeah. it makes sense it's that second it would be one of the bigger week. weeks. Yeah. yeah, because it's so, like five weeks before marathon day. So that's usually where the peak is, somewhere yeah. in there. Yeah. Yeah, the two peak, the two peak weeks. It's the first one of the two peak weeks. Yeah, and so they have their the tune up races. I think they have one at two weeks before the end and one at four weeks before the end originally. But so we picked this race instead to do it as our marathon pace training five weeks before the end. So yeah, we figured it was a good tactic. If we in the past we failed that training session to put it into a race. Because we yeah. figured to we'd help get extra, us yeah, yeah, extra excitement from the whole race day yeah. experience and people giving us water so we don't have to carry it. So there's one kilo that I'm not going to have on my back already. Exactly. <laughs> so that's uh, that's basically the plan. And um, I guess, well, we'll see what happens in 12 weeks. I guess we, uh, we did talk about having a coach at one point. Um, and, um, that a bit fell by the wayside. I, I don't know if we actually even have a reason for it. Um, I think it's just because we weren't thinking about it, weren't thinking about it. And now it's time. And a couple of authors talked to us about maybe getting a coach. Yeah. And we, we, we haven't really thought about it. Um, yeah, I think if we wanted a coach, we would have had to get the coach be right after the marathon last year because the coach kind of so. gets has to get to know you you know they don't so. they don't know us and so before they can give you the workouts that are going to work for you like you kind of have to work with them for a while with um, respect to that i guess we should say okay if we want to go around again for another year we should think about getting a coach before year end after yeah. we've done our marathon anyway we can we can talk about it and think about it um hopefully though I will run two fifty nine fifty nine, and then I'm not signing up for any marathons next year. Yeah, that we'll is see. my one year retirement from marathon running. <laughs> uh, unless I get it, sucked I mean, in if by the you. training goes if the training goes well and we get a good day, we're in with a chance, aren't we? I think so. I mean, I think we took care of the race, so we took care of the race. The race is going to be great. From what we hear from the people that we know that have gone to wine glass, it should mm -hmm. be a flat, fast, well, slightly downhill fast course Yeah, uh, on the road. So the Petit Train was on a gravel path. And so maybe the, you know, because like the energy returns not the same, maybe that affected something. But um, this time around, it's a proven fast course. So we've done we've done everything we can in terms of picking the time and the the, the actual race. Exactly. We've we've picked the training. The training starts next week. 
Yeah, we've picked the training. We made it down to 12 weeks because 18 weeks was exhausting us. Um, yeah. We even said, well, we need to have a base kind of ready when we come into the 12 week training because it's pretty unforgiving once it starts. Um, so we've been doing a little bit inspired from um, Andrew Snow's Run Elite base building, which is to do lots of slow, easy miles and mm -hmm. do a few a few strides, something like that, just to keep your your speed there, but just build your base, your anaerobic base. So we've been trying to do that a little bit. Yeah. Also, um, I think I learned from my previous mistakes because I think some some of the years um, we would we would be trying to compensate too much before the training plan actually started. So I think sometimes we went in already like slightly boiled and um mm -hmm. then we just overcooked during the training because we would like get into it we would build up the mileage for a month before and we would be running all this all these case for an extra month before the actual training plan started um and like you know when we were doing it we thought it was logical because we figured well we'll be at that level and then we're gonna go into this training plan but i think we didn't have maybe enough of a of a dip in between, you know, it was just too long of a stretch with just too so you many felt days. you did you didn't come in rested before you started the heavy training? No, I didn't. Mm. No. Because oftentimes also there would be a race in the spring. And I know like I felt um one year we did that Quebec Mega Trail at the end of June, which is a yeah. trail race. It was a 50k. And we had been training for that. Like granted it's not the same kind of training, but you know, we would go every Saturday to Mont, Mont, Mont Tremblant and we would go and be doing up and down for 24K, which 24K doesn't sound like a lot, but it's we would be there for like four six and hours. One half, to do hours for work. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, then I did the 50K and I think the training plan started like one week later. And I remember we were thinking, well, we'll take like a week and then we like that week, we'll just sort of uh, try to recover and get into the training afterwards. And like, I guess it was okay, but I, I wonder if like later it wasn't okay because because we were a bit overcooked. My, my I guess my tactic was this time to be able to do some hundred k, a block of hundred k weeks, without working too hard. Mm -hmm. It's a bit of a contradiction in terms because. <laughs> It's quite a lot of case. It's kind of sounds like a lot of work, but the idea is to try to do it easy, fun, slow. Yeah. Um, and then, then for the last couple of weeks, I've just been doing whatever I felt like. Probably a little bit too much. You seem to be resting a little bit more. Yeah, plenty, I'm, plenty I'm of trying... things on your agenda, so it's been easier yeah. for you. I to know it's been easier rest. because I've had some some distractions, so it's been uh, it's been easier this time around. I also feel like. Like I've been having a hard time, like eating for a hundred K worth of training. So I, like I've been having since that marathon, I've been having like sort of just dips in in energy and then I'll be like, oh yeah, like, you know, I haven't been eating like all the snacks in between like breakfast and lunch and, you know, before, before workouts and stuff. Cause I just get lazy, I guess. And so is that something that you've got then, to consciously focus on this time I, around? I do because when I follow the plan, so, so, um, the, I have a plan from when I saw the dietitian, um, not last summer, but the summer before. Okay. And she made me a plan and it's still on the fridge. It's just that like following it is difficult because it's just, so much food so often but it's really it's well outlined it's like I'm supposed to have a breakfast that's bigger than what I would naturally eat so like extra toast um like basically double the amount of toast that I would normally eat uh and then and then you know like a couple hours later at because I get up really early so breakfast is at 6 a.m so, so I'm supposed to have a snack at 10. So you do hobbit and hobbit food eating <laughs> Second breakfast. <laughs> Second breakfast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's just, it's a hard schedule to follow in terms of just because I find that hours just go by so fast. And, and like, 
it's easy to just pass by you know the time just passes yeah, and, and i haven't done it especially and... if you're working if you're working out that can kill your appetite yeah because you yeah. run in the mornings don't you Sometimes, like I do now, but obviously I won't when we do the training because I'm going to yeah. be running with you. And also the training is longer and you don't get up at 5 a.m. So <laughs> I have to compromise, you know. Yeah, I think. I'll Alan is see. looking at me like, a. there's a five in the a.m.? Like, yeah. What do you I think? That, do that was that our time? conversations where you said, oh, we could run at five. So, yeah, I can make that. And then I realized it was a.m. <laughs> didn't realize anybody ran at 5 a.m yeah some people do right. yeah but yeah it was uh but but it's fine uh, like i'll switch to evenings but um and I, I when when this plan was created it was created with the idea that i'm training in the evening and that i don't have a lot of time between training and sleep because that's usually the case right like i we also we get up early but we go to bed really early too <laughs> so we're mm -hmm. like we're on the schedule of like a 12 year old basically that's our household it's like it's dark at 9 p.m yeah. for sure and there are lights on at like five or six in the morning for some strange reason <laughs> but you yeah guys, you guys i operate on montreal time you you operate on like california time or something uh so no i think you'd have to go in the other direction oh is it You're... yeah i think i would be operating on um like Mid newfoundland time newfoundland yeah. time or something or middle of the atlantic <laughs> somewhere or maybe european time because <laughs> what's 5 a.m that'd be like 11 a.m it could be like a person that sleeps in in europe so you gotta one of the things you gotta do is be careful to eat enough not get yourself into a cal calorie debt yeah, because I think that um, I, I definitely go through cycles where I'm just like, really, I do all this training, I feel great. And then it, it's like falling off a cliff. It'll be like from, you know, one day to the next, and I'll just be dragging my feet. And the the feeling of dragging your feet, it's like it doesn't go away. And it's like, you think at the beginning, like, oh, it's, it's because I'm not warmed up. But it, it's not, mm -hmm. it just never goes away. It just lasts for the whole run. And when it's one of those 24k medium long runs, it's pretty miserable. <laughs> It's a long yeah. time to drag your feet. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm not very chatty during those, right, Alan? <laughs> yeah, it's true. And then when it's a lactate threshold run, of course, you'll, you'll struggle probably with the pace. Yeah, then I can't do the pace usually. Or I can do the pace, but for like half of the amount of time that I'm supposed to be. So anyway, uh, so that's going to be my big struggle. lactate threshold runs in week two? Yeah, I know. I'm already dreading it. Uh, you've, you've spotted it, have you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I try not to think about it, but I know it's I know it's very soon because I remember the I re, well I kind of remember I think the lactate threshold is like more at the beginning um, because later on they do more like there's some five k pace workouts which those I usually am okay with yeah um, even though they're uh, those really are the long. sort of VO two max a VO two max yeah that's the yeah, ones workout. yeah where it's like yeah. to um, begin to begin with you we we're in a what what. I guess what fitting it calls an endurance block, and each week either has a marathon pace, a decent decent amount of marathon pace mileage in mm -hmm. a run, or it alternates weeks with weeks that have lactate threshold. You don't run as far, but you run faster. Yeah, yep. And in between, there's just a whole lot of running, but I kind of like yeah. that part, so that's okay. Yeah, like the medium long runs, I'm okay with. I, I like the, <laughs> I see eventually we get uh, double days mm -hmm. and there's a double day that's called a recovery day, but mm -hmm. it has two runs in it. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> thanks. That's a nice recovery. Yeah. yeah. I guess they're easy runs. I mean, because the thing is, it's much easier to run 10K and 6K than it is to yeah. run 16K, like in terms of just how yeah. you feel at the end. Yeah, it's like called, it it's called like recovery because you not because you don't get to run, but you get to run in a manner <laughs> which allows you to have a chance at maybe recovering. Yeah, maybe. But if maybe. we survive this, we're going to be <laughs> really going, fit. We're going to be, yeah. And we're going to be running 259, 59, no problem. <laughs> yeah. Actually, Alan would prefer to run like 258, 59 so that he could just cruise into the, uh, the finish, yeah. not like... He had to hammer it home in his last attempt. 
yeah, you go, oh, I'll settle for 259.59. But when that actually happens, the amount of panic that you have in the last K, it's horrendous. Mm -hmm. It's horrible. Yeah. I, I mean, you would probably be happy to sign up for it now. But at the time, it's awful. Yeah. You need to have a minute up your sleeve so you can. Yeah. So you can hopefully not vomit that last Morton gel. Yeah, so exactly. I just keep this pace and I'll be fine. Okay. So but, um, uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. We have a whole lot of training to do first and then we'll see as long as we're not injured, sufficiently fueled, sufficiently rested, uh, then we can think about like running this marathon. About strength training. Are you doing strength training through this? So I want to. So I uh, I put it in my plan. I want to do Jay Desherry strength, um, the performance strength workouts. I want to do yeah. them twice a week. Um, but you know what? Like, like we'll see. So I've started doing them twice a week. Yeah, I'm currently doing uh, but, Jay Desherry's um, power power A routine. Yeah, and then I do um uh Neely. Really oh, on the second day, yeah. yeah. The dumbbell, dumbbell routine. routine. Yeah. On the second day, but I think I'm going to change it up. Uh, yeah. But one of the things we'll need to ask Jay if we can get him on is, you know, when do we stop? Yeah. Well, also the thing is for uh, the performance, the, the power workouts, I think like you don't usually do those more than six weeks. So you probably want to switch to the, the, just the regular like, perform um uh, what does he call them there's because the the two power the two power ones power a power b at the end yeah. um i think those are like they're just for sort of kind of just before race season to get you okay. that little extra so should edge. Be kind of stopping now yeah probably Switching i think into, uh, i think we should be ones. yeah i think we should be doing some of the performance ones like either performance prep or Single leg focus or horizontal force or vertical force. One of those four, I think. Or alternate those four. I haven't got to that section in the book yet. I'm not quite finished the book. Yeah, well, I'm not finished the book. And this is the second edition, so it might not be uh like might same. might not be the same, yeah. But he also has, if you wanted to change up the Neely dumbbell routine for something else, he's yeah. got the precision workouts. And those are like a bit yes. similar because a lot of them are that. body weight exercises. Or I'll probably do that. Not, yeah. I'll check it out. Yeah. I've just gotten lazy because I know these routines off by heart and I can just walk into the gym and do it. I know. Isn't that great? Yeah. I just feel like that just eliminates one of the barriers to going to the gym. You know, because sometimes when you know you're going to have to think about it and you have to get there early and because you have to think about it, you have to get there even earlier than you usually yeah. would have to then I feel like just adds like an extra layer of like, it does like a bit. I, I don't think. feel like doing yeah. it. And if you just go and you can do something that you've. Okay. So we're going to keep going with two, two a week up until, I don't know, up until we do our half marathon race, at least. At least. I mean, I think even after that, we could probably continue, but just maybe we would do the, the precision workouts twice a week instead of doing the, but it, it's going to depend how we feel because honestly, in the past with these marathon plans, trying to lift any weight at the gym <laughs> was such a struggle. <laughs> so let's let's see what happens. Um, other than that, what about our fueling? Yeah. So do you think we need to change that? I mean, I think our marathon fueling is okay just because... I don't think I could eat more gel than one every 6K, even though, no. um, you know, I, I've seen some things like one every that, you know, might not be enough, but um, but I already I can't eat the, that there's, much. There's so. the dilemma, dilemma of do you take a gel on the start line or not? Mm -hmm. um, and I think our compromise for that last time was to take one gel between us. We took yeah. half a gel each <laughs> exactly, <laughs> because we figured we'd used some energy doing the warm up. Mm -hmm. warm up. yeah so. also we had the caffeinated morton so like half of the caffeinated morton each is like 50 milligrams of caffeine each 
because they have 100 milligrams of caffeine. Yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah. I think the difficulty for me is after about 30K, trying to take the gels and keep them down. Yeah, me too. I I um, end up not even taking them because I, think, I don't think that I can keep them down and I don't want to throw up before the finish lines. <laughs> I think the molten <laughs> gels are easy to get down. Keep down, I'm not sure, but get mm -hmm. down. Get and down, the, yeah, because they don't have the flavor. They're easier to take in, in smaller amounts as well. So you can maybe open a gel, take a third of it. Mm -hmm. Once you've got that in and you feel comfortable, take another third. That get that gets tough when you get near the end of a marathon because mentally you're so fatigued, you can't be bothered with that. You don't yeah. your stomach's rejecting it. Um, but I think you have to you have to force that. You've got to have those extra calories in when you get near the end. Yeah. So I think that's there's nothing we can do about that. You've just got to try and train your body to yeah. deal with it. You can that's take it, it at the yeah. end of your training. But I think we're near gonna... the end of your training. We've got these mid long runs. We'll be getting fatigued. We could maybe wait until we're a bit fatigued and then try to take them rather than fuel the whole run. Mm -hmm. um, we could try Although that. um, I heard, I heard that, and I can't remember where I heard it, or maybe we read it in a book, but um, that if you can fuel at the beginning and more often, then you might be able to eliminate some of the. Um, the gastric like the distress like because your uh, stomach kind of is, is because it doesn't have a chance down. exactly it doesn't yeah. shut down or something so yeah. yeah so i think maybe like that wouldn't be a good strategy because yeah. we already can't eat the gels that are at the end it's so gonna maybe make, it's gonna make training expensive <laughs> if we're going to do that <laughs> on morton stuff no no but we're not gonna do it with morton because we're yeah. smarter than that we're gonna choose the cheap gel for the training and then use morton for the race <laughs> Right, Alan? Yeah, but then you're not acclimatized to the gel that you're taking. But we know we'll we be can, taking we know it we for can the... digest Martins. Yeah. We'll be taking it for that race as well. The 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 one yeah. where we're going to do marathon pace for half marathon. Yep. So, yeah. So I think we're good. Other than that, I think the only other real, I mean, we're good on sleep. Like you sleep because you're retired and I sleep mm -hmm. because I'm usually good at sleeping. Um and otherwise what about uh, mental strategies so i i'm trying to um think of different positive affirmations and mantras that that maybe i could use during training when it gets hard and then hopefully if i can find some that kind of click then I can also use them at, so at the race. So you're practicing some uh, mantras. I want to practice. Yes. Yeah. So so in order to remember the mantras, because that's the first. That's the first thing is once so my you brain had is one deprived on of your oxygen. Arm the other day. <laughs> yes, because so, uh, once my brain. Shopping, what kind of mantra is that? Two loaves of bread, <laughs> half a pound of butter. <laughs> no, see, my strategy of writing it on my arm is because because sometimes like when I'm really fatigued and I'm trying to run, I don't remember anything. <laughs> I think I'm very useless. It's like my brain mm -hmm. is like a pile no, of it's, mush. It's, it's and smart. you played. Yeah. So I yeah. read it on my arm. So then yeah. um, I can read it. Do you write on your other arm? Look at your other arm. <laughs> that actually, that's a smart strategy, but I can't write with my left hand or I can write with my left hand, but I might not be able to read it. Oh yeah, that's true. Uh, his that's good. So, so tell us so okay, what, what, if, what you tried so far and does it work? Um, so, so far I tried two of them, but the only one I can remember right now, just because we're talking about it is the one that I had written on my arm yesterday was um, just do one at a time. Um, and I guess I like it because because you can like one is can be one K, but it can be like one interval or one block if you're running like in a city or it can be one um, one step if like you're really yeah. not not doing that well yeah. uh, or it can be like one water station. So I feel like it's not limited as um, so, for example, like I think in the past, like we would do. Or I, I would think about it a lot because we have a training partner, Guillaume, that would always say like one more K. And normally a K is not a long, it's not a long way. 
but every so often it it does feel like quite a long way so then I guess it was like a modified one more k where it's just is like one at a time and I could pick what that one is if it, the one is a k or if the one is an interval uh, or if the one is a one lap of the track because sometimes those 1200 meters at vo2 max like I just find that those three laps That's tough are tough and sometimes what I'll do is I will just do one at a time I'm like okay I have three laps like one yeah. two and then only one left you know so um well, one of my mantras for the for the marathon in the past was, was run the k you're in mm -hmm. so, oh that's a good one you know don't think too far mm -hmm. that's a bit like your one at a time but it's a bit more specific towards just the marathon and the kilometers Ks tick over quite quick, so you can check in. Just but just run, just run the K you're in. If you yeah. don't run the, if you don't run this K well, there's no point in worrying about the end result. Just run this K well. Yeah. Directly, calmly. Good, good form, good energy on on pace. Okay, forget that now. Or if you're off pace, forget that now. Run the next K. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I think that's uh, that's the important thing as well, as um. Is that, you know, if you do have a bad K, like you can't get that, you can't let that get you spiraling towards. Can't let that color you, you know? yeah. If you're, going through, yeah. if you're going through a bad patch, you got to believe that that bad patch is going to is over. come out of it. I've taken mm -hmm. some gels. I've done the, th I've taken some water. I've mm -hmm. done the things I can. I could slow down, but that's going to ruin my whole race. So let's just run this K still at the same pace and see if I come out. Yeah. Only one K. Yeah. It's not going to kill me. Yeah. Let's just do it's it. hard though, right? Because like when you have this goal and you're holding this goal so tightly that, you know, you have that, that, that few K that were just like, you lost, you know, it seems like a, a, an, um, a huge unsurmountable amount of time because, you know, when you're running four fifteen per kilometer and now you've run, mm -hmm a 430 and a 435 or something like it's only 15 to 20 seconds per kilometer but the thought of having to now get those seconds back yeah you've got when, now got to run 410 for about six kilometers in a row yeah yeah which just seems impossible and i think like that's that's where the the magic happens is if you can just forget those kilometers that were bad, like you just, you know, they're behind you. It's, it's in the past. Mm -hmm. You can't do anything about it. You can just run what you can run now. And like the first step is let's see if I can get closer to the goal pace. And now maybe, you know, you maybe yeah, you're that's, gonna... that's trying to put it together from a, let's say a, a negative point of view, you will have yeah. challenges, but you can also use it from a positive point of view. Let's say you run 413, you run 410, you run 414, you mm -hmm. run 412. And you just go, okay, forget those. Let's try and run 4.15. Mm -hmm. Don't get too far ahead of yourself. Stay on pace. Calm down. Yeah, got, because that's got, the other thing. You, you can't got time in the time. bag. You got time mm -hmm. in the bag, but don't panic that you're running too fast either. You you don't. That's true, because I do do that. Because yeah. I Because I've had so many crash and burn marathons. I mean, I'm an expert at crashing and burning in a marathon. <laughs> Also, also one of mine is, you know, try to enjoy the process. So, you know, smile. You 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 volunteered for this. You're you're so lucky to be able to turn up and have a good. Not go just at that, it. you paid money. And, yeah, <laughs> you, you paid, money paid, to paid, to paid for the privilege. <laughs> yeah, you paid for the privilege to make yourself suffer. Uh, We're like special kind of. Here's a hundred dollars and a really big <laughs> stick. Could you just beat me up with it? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. It's a good thing that only runners listen to this because we sound like a bunch of weirdos. <laughs> well, now you've attracted all the people because you told, because you told the story about not wearing pants. Um, <laughs> well, now we've, we've lost all them kinds all. of weirdos on the, on the <laughs> lost podcast. Lost them all now. by now for sure. <laughs> um, you know, one of the things we have to remind ourselves is to enjoy the process. So, you know, we'll do that through the training. Try to enjoy the training process, get as much out of it as we can, have fun doing it, laugh and joke, um, commiserate with each other if if it, if the wheels come off. Mm -hmm. um, but 
enjoy that process because, you know, we'll get the race and the race will bring whatever we have on the day. I mean, maybe there'll be a big, I don't know, big thunderstorm or something and it'll be difficult to run. We won't be able to do the three hours. Mm. Um, we have to come into that feeling that it's worth it, what we've done. So, you know, enjoy the process. Um, in terms of, you know, working mantras, in terms of trying to deliver um, an effort, I think I got the the one I use, I got from Karagacha, which is, you know, breathe in, breathe in energy, breathe in power, breathe out weakness. So yeah. I say that to um, myself sometimes. Yeah, I know that you, you use that one. And I and I and I still want to use it as well because I feel like it works really well for you, but it just like does. doesn't doesn't really work for me. I don't know. Like I've it's, tried it during it's, and it doesn't it's, it's better on 10 Ks, I, I would say. When Probably you're, you're working really hard and you're gasping. Mm -hmm. Um but you can get you can get yourself a little, you know, when you when you feel oh things are falling apart a little bit, I'm getting tired. You can you can say that to yourself a little bit and stabilize yourself, get your form back, mm -hmm. get your mental form back, and then get back into the care and run the care you're in. Yeah. So hopefully it'll work. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah, we've got um, we've got, a few, we've got a few things from that point of view. Yeah, I I think we're I think we're setting it up for success, but um, you know, I thought that last year and the year before and the year before that as well. So <laughs> let's let's see what happens. Um, but yeah, I think that the, the extra thing that I was going to try and focus on is the, um, just the, the psychology part of it. Um, so we'll see, we'll see if I find some things that, that work really well, or maybe it, the secret is just in, um, in trying, you know, sometimes like you don't really have to find this, the one secret thing, because I think with mantras and uh, positive affirmations, it kind of depends where you're at. And I think they, it, that place can change over a yeah. training cycle or over the years. And so, you know, there were things I, I think I used to use back when I was running cross country. And I don't really remember many of them now because like they stopped working, like it stopped being, I guess. Relevant to you. Yeah. But uh, I think one of them was like, um, I, I know, I think this was just something that my coach at the time used to say, he would just say like, you can do hard things. Um, we've read that somewhere else too, I think. Oh, do, do hard, hard things. things. Do hard things by Steve Magnus. Yeah, Andres, I can, um, I should, I should probably write that one on my uh, arm one day Fitz, and see if Fitz it works. <laughs> Fitz Cola in her, uh, My Crazy Cancer Cover. Yes, that's where we got it. Yes, yeah, that I remember. Okay. a sticker that said, you can do hard things. Yeah, yeah. So maybe I'm going to try and do hard things. One of the ones I used in Toronto at the near the end was think about all the people who can't do this. Um, one person in particular at the time was Matt, was Matt Fitzgerald. You know, he had mm -hmm. his long, he's got his long term COVID and he can't run and he would love to run. Yeah. And like he would give anything to swap positions with you. Yeah. You know what, though? I've tried that. And it didn't work because I thought about um, someone that passed away. It just made you sad. And it just made me sad. And then, like, I had to try and stop myself from crying during the run. <laughs> so um, I think I can't use that strategy. <laughs> it's it's uh, counterproductive. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, because it, that that seemed like such a meaningful thing. You know, I'm doing the thing that there that some people can't do and they would love to do. But then, yeah, then I I can't do it if I can't see anything because I'm crying. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. It, it occurs to me that maybe not so much me, but maybe you, maybe you're holding your, maybe you're holding your, um, your goal too tightly. Maybe yeah. Just let it come to you. Uh, do all the training, put in all the effort, and let it come to you. There's probably truth to that because uh, I do hold it pretty tight sometimes, and and uh, it's true also that sometimes when you don't hold it tight, then it comes to you when you least expect it because 
that's happened just in other things in my life, like jobs and things, you know, it's always the job that you're kind of like, Ugh, I, you know, I don't care if I get it or not. And then, and then you get like a, uh, a contract. So, <laughs> you're like, get an offer. so yeah. yeah, the one that you're desperate um, for, nobody else. The one that you're desperate you. for, nobody wants to give you. And then the one that you're sort of like, Oh well, you know what the heck? Like I, yeah, if you hold it more gently, applying. you're probably a little less tense while you're running, mm. and that small amount of tension equates to uh, just that little bit of energy extra that you need. Maybe. Who knows? Oh, maybe that should be one of my mantras. I can write next one. I'm writing on my arm is um, I don't know. Cornflakes. Don't don't, don't hold huh. <laughs> cornflakes of milk. Uh um don't hold don't hold on to it so tight or something i don't know i'll have to think of something that's short because otherwise i'm gonna have a whole paragraph on my arm and it won't fit <laughs> hold, hold it gently ah uh, okay okay hold that's it gently good. I is write more that... positive rather than don't shouldn't have a mantra that says don't ah uh, you're right eh that's yeah. yeah yeah gotta have positive did we learn that from somebody holding your goal gently you probably did um it's not the sort of thing I would think of. No, I think I think we read it in a book, but I yeah. can't remember which one. Yeah. Okay, so we're going into 12 weeks, and then we're going to have another attack at the sub-3 hour. And maybe the listeners can tell us yeah, if, like, like, they're curious about any, you know, mid, yeah. mid-term yeah, mid updates or, I don't know, like, it makes it sound like school. Like, um, yeah. I guess mid well, Yeah, if you've got any program, advice for us that might help us or... Program. Uh, we take advice um, too, yes. Or you want to know anything that we might be able to tell you? Mm -hmm. Like, did Liz turn up with her pants on? <laughs> so far, she's turned up to all the training with her pants on, as far <laughs> so, as I'm aware. So far, so good. <laughs> I think it's because I'm extra aware of it, so I make sure that I always... Yeah. <laughs> was make sure that I put on my pants before leaving the house. <laughs> uh, it's the weirdest of dreams, too. It's like, I, it doesn't even make sense. But I guess that's the way dreams are, right? They just don't make sense. <laughs> so that this all starts imminent now, seven days a week for the next 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. I guess that's really all we have to say today. I mean, this is kind of a long bonus episode, but... Um, um, I guess the only the last thing that I'll say is like we're really sorry that we don't have a book. We did talk yeah. about books though during this chat, but yeah, it's not the same as as we an actual read book. Three books. We're we're yeah. ahead. Of, we're ahead of the book reading. I know. We're three, we're three books ahead. Um, just we wanted to get. There were a couple of books where we really want to get the author on. Um, and so uh, one of the problems is we're in we're in an Olympic period. Some of them are coaches it's and kind of difficult to yeah. Um, so, uh, do you want to do the outro? Um, yeah, sure. Thank you for listening to Running Book Reviews. I can't remember what the outro is. Oh, yeah. I should have written that down for you. How does it go? Um, it goes, it goes um, thanks and, for listening uh, to another episode of so Running, Running Book, Book Reviews, Reviews, the bonus episode. Um, yeah. So, if you'd and like thank to... Thank you to, insert name of publisher here, and <laughs> insert name of author here for giving us books and spending time with us today yeah well you don't have to say that part because we didn't talk oh. about a book and we don't have any okay. guests just us all right so thanks if, you, if to you'd the like to give us for... some feedback uh or maybe suggest a book that you'd like us to read um you can communicate with us on social media on facebook and instagram we are running book reviews and on twitter x we are reviews underscore running leave us a message on, on any of these platforms or you can just subscribe on your favorite streaming platform or something like that that is perfect and we're, we're, we're also out. on buy me a coffee what do you mean we're out <laughs> then, then buy me a coffee <laughs> uh, okay 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 so now we're serious we got to chop that part out and we'll, yeah, we'll cut all of that out and put something professional in. Just go to Buy Me A Coffee where you can uh, register to get all sorts of updates and outtakes and uh, little extras. Um, and you can buy us a coffee if you want, but you don't have to. If you follow us, you'll get emails when we post something new. So um, you can always follow us on Buy Me A Coffee. I think you'll have to create uh, an account so that you could follow creators. But um, 
uh, if you if you want to be notified every time we put something there, then it might be worth your effort. Uh, that's all for today from Running Book Reviews. Bye for now. Bye. Um, because it's a bonus episode, Liz will sing the outro tune. There is no outro tune. Oh yeah, there is, but I don't know what it is because I don't edit this podcast. You do, so I'll never remember the outro tune. Well, it's the same as the intro tune. Yeah, I know, but I, you know.